strikes me a lot when I'm reading the, our Father's Word. And um, the Word is, um, is sealing. God places a mark. He seals His servants. And when I, when I say sealing, I, I want you, I'm going to read the Greek word to you. Um, you can check it out on your strongs. It's also in the orders. It's, the, it's 4972. And it's um, Sephardis. And it states, it's, um, it's to stand.
message that was given to us, right, through John, signified, right, by God, giving us this word, this book. Mind you, in Revelation chapter 5, verse 5, 6, and 7, there was a, a lamb that appeared in heaven as it had been slain. It says, weep not, John started crying, because there was no man worthy to open the book and to loosen the seals thereof. There was seven of them. Then it said, he said, the angel said to John, weep not for the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed. He accomplished it. So then it says that the lamb appeared before the throne as it, as it had been slain, and he was worthy to open the book. So he came and ran and took the book. And then he started to break open the seals. Whereby there were no men worthy to open the book, neither to look thereon. But when Christ started opening these seals, the light started to shine. The wisdom and understanding of God's word started to go forward. Right? There's a special seal for a special purpose. A special per person. That is, all right? Let's look at verse Revelation 7, verse 1. Listen to this. He says, And after these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth. You know this by Revelation by Ezekiel chapter 37. Ain't this funny? Ezekiel 37, um, Daniel chapter 7, and Revelation chapter 7. It talks about these four winds. Three perfect seven. Seven in biblical numeric stands for spiritual. He says, holding the four winds of the, of, of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any green or any tree. And this is all natural stuff. When we look at this, we know that um, when God was talking about the, the, the natural things of, of this world at this time, it's towards the end. Don't blow on it, because when they blow, it will start to destroy. All right? Verse 2, he says, And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. That's that promise. That's that hedge of protection. And he cried with a loud voice, to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. Saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. Now that's tough. In their foreheads. What is that? What's in your forehead? It's your brain, right? You're supposed to use it. You're supposed to think with it, right? He said, hold off on the sword of earth until we have sealed the servants of God in their foreheads. But what? The seal is true. God's word. Look at verse 4. He says, and I heard the number. Now, mind you, I, I want to I, I just tell you something. There are, there's a certain sect, even though Paul was stating in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, I'm just Christ divided. I'm glad I am baptized none of y'all. Cephas and Paulus and all them. There was a mayhem in the church at Corinth at that time. Because they were taking sides. And Paul was saying, hey, if this Christ divided, I'm glad I am baptized none of y'all. Because then y'all be saying that you're baptized under me. Right? Christ is not divided. Let me show you something. When we start to divide, which that's what our, our word denomination means. It means to separate, to segregate, to divide. Look it up, right? That's what the word denomination means. So when you start placing denominations in the word, 
on your, on your church sign, you don't even have to speak no more. That, that sign will let you know that, you're, that if it's Baptist, there's no Pentecostal as well. You got to be Baptist in order to come in. That's what, you may not say that, but that's what the sign is saying. All right? If it's Pentecostal, Pentecostal is not going to come by, come walking by a Baptist church and go in like they're welcome. You follow me? So the enemy loves to use little things like that. And he will, he's not going to use a boulder. He'll use stones, pebbles to trip people up. You follow me? Things that we may say, oh, it's not that big of a deal, but to God it's huge. Right? It causes a hindrance and a division among the church. God does not like it. Here's one division that a certain set. Now they're starting to recant their belief. It says in verse 4, And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there was sealed 144,000 of all the tribes of Israel. Now there's a certain group that says, Oh, there's only 144,000 that's going to be saved and going to heaven. Then when the message was going out, they had to recant because they're saying, well, in our congregation, whereby we're all over the world, there's more than 144,000 of us. So now they would have to explain, well, if there's only 144,000, then a lot of y'all ain't going to make it. Right? So now they had to recant what they said. Now, I'm going to show you that the danger, the word of God has subject and object. You have to know when the subject starts and when the subject ends. It was unfortunate that as they read this verb, this, this chapter, that they didn't, they stopped at verse 8 when it continues after that. So they didn't get around in verse 9. All right? So, <clears throat> I'm not going to read verse 5, 6, 7, and 8. It, it just says that these are the 12... Um, the, I'll read the first one. It says in verse 5, of the tribe of Judah were sealed 12,000, and so on and so forth, all the way down until we get. Now, this note that this is all from the tribe of Israel. It was 144,000 that was sealed of the children of Israel. They would say that that's the number that's going to make it, and it's not, because it's the 144,000 that was sealed was only added to an untold numerable amount of people. So it's not just the 144,000. Let's read. Look at now. I'm going to read verse 8, and then we'll hit verse 9, the verse that they missed. All right, listen to this. It says, um, of the tribe of Zubalim were sealed 12,000, and of the tribe of Joshua were sealed was sealed 12,000. And of the tribe of Benjamin was sealed 12,000. That would make up your 144,000. Listen to this next verse. After this I, after what? After the sealing of 144,000, behold and lo, a great multitude which no man could number. So you can't say 100. Because you don't know the number. It was more than that, right? Listen, it says, Now this I beheld and lo, a great multitude which no man could number of all nations, not just the tribe of Israel, all nations and kindreds and peoples and tongues stood before the throne and before the land clothed with white robes and palms. Food for thought is not just 144,000, but there's an untold numerous amount of one people that's going to be standing before the throne of God, sealed with that seal. Right? Mark 13 tells us that, um, that I have foretold you all things. God goes into a little bit of the sealing in the book of Ezekiel, because that's what we're going to turn to next, Ezekiel chapter 9. I'm going to give you a little um, 
background a little of chapter 8. We taught chapter 8 during um, Pascha, which is 58 day, or not Pascha, Pascha, um, Pentecostal. Pentecostal means 50, 50 days, right? We taught this, which the people that don't believe in biblical things, they call it Easter. So we, we taught um, Ezekiel 8 on the day of Passover. Turn me to Ezekiel chapter, chapter 9. Um, what was going on in, um, in Ezekiel chapter 8? They, the elders of the church, the elders of the church were, were weeping for Tammuz. Tammuz was a, um, an Assyrian god um, that, that, was, that was made of either vegetation or, or stiff animals. And they called that their god. And the children of Israel always had a knack to want to carve something, make something their god. Remember when Moses went up and they just built a golden calf, regardless of the hand of God that led them out of the out of Egypt with that pillar of fire by night and cloud by day, regardless of that fact and how God released them out of bondage when they entered the wilderness. But when they didn't see Moses for a while, they figured that they'd be carved a, um, a donkey to throw the calf. And they would rather listen to a statue that can't walk, talk, or breathe listening to the to Almighty God. They would rather they worship worship the creation rather than the creator, is what it says. So we have a knack to do that. And when you look at it today, bring that up to speed today, people they pray um, concerning the necklace and the beads on it. That man made, right? That can't walk, talk, or breathe, or even give you a sense of direction. Yet we, we pray and we have names for each one of them. You're talking about fire being sent. They also, in Ezekiel chapter 8, God took Ezekiel in the spirit. And, and he was showing Ezekiel in the spirit behind the scenes of what they do in the house of God. Just look at what they do. Playing church is a dangerous thing, and I'm going to show you that, that, it, that it sends um, God in fear. When you play games, rather than hearing the word of God, you know, am I making sense? Mm -hmm. The Bible says, why do you think the Bible says that, he says that my people perish for lack of knowledge? It says that they are wise to do evil, but to do good, they don't have no knowledge. We do shenanigans, we have shenanigans in the house of God that takes away when, when people should be reading. Right? They come in with, with you know, white masks and gloves, and they pop lock, and, and they show signs concerning scripture. And it's like, well, these people are dying out here, and I don't want to see them dance when I come. Of God. And listen, if, if that's what gets the kids in the church to, to, to start getting them going, then, then so be it. But I think the best thing that we should do is to be able to bring forth the Word of God in the simplicity, whereby people will start learning. You see, when you, you, you have a mate, your husband, wife, girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever, you just didn't pick them, right? You had to get to know the individual, right? Mm -hmm. You had to spend time with the individual, mm -hmm. right? Y'all didn't go out when y'all first, the few first dates, you didn't go to, to, to the movies. You can't talk in a movie theater, right? Go out to eat, get something to eat, talk for a chance, get to know each other, right? Talking on the phone all night, right? Get to know the person. This is how you get to know who God is. 
Christ says, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. Not of you, but of me. This is how you know who Christ is. Right? Ezekiel was taken behind the scenes in the spirit to see what the church and the church folk were doing. It says, look at them. These great abominations, they were giving worship to the sun. All 25 of the, it says ancients, but in the, in the Hebrew tongue it's elders. Who crucified Christ? Chief priests. Your religious folks. Right? Stop me at the door. Don't come in the spirit of God. I'm going to show you the spirit of God. They started to. This was done in the inner court. When Christ died, they veiled the temple, rent in two from top to bottom, right? That's where the Holy of Holies is. Only the priest was allowed, but when Christ died, he says, Whomsoever will, right? Come boldly before the throne. These priests were sitting here having sun worship. This is, the, I'm just, it reads really in you. Got to give you the backbone of, of, of what I'm talking about. And um, they have their backs towards the temple of the Lord and their face pointing east to the, to the sun, the sun worship. The kids, they went out and gathered the wood and the, the women throw their, their bread, put the little cross on the bread. This is Y'all know what Easter means? The word? The word Easter is Ishtar. It's a paganistic holiday. Fertility rights, eggs and bunnies, quick like a bunny. Then we bring that into the house of God. It's for the kids to make an excuse. It's for the kids. What you do for the kids is not going to change the origin of, of the meaning behind what you're doing. You're still promoting regards to what spin you want to put on it. Does it make sense? took Ezekiel and showed him what was going on in the temple of the Lord. And I'm going to pick this up in verse, uh, in chapter 9, Ezekiel, verse 9. I mean, verse 1. Chapter 9, verse 1. It says, And he cried also with my ears with a loud voice, Ezekiel Satan, saying, Now this is right after God is showing Ezekiel what they're doing with their backs toward You know what, matter of fact, Go back with me to, um, to Ezekiel chapter 8. I just, I just want to show you this real quick, just in case you don't do it with me, you do it here. But verse 16 in um, Ezekiel chapter 8, it says in, in verse 14, it says, look at what they're doing, they're keeping their tables. Paganistic, right? 15 says, then said he unto me, Hast thou seen this old son of man? Turn ye yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations than these. What is that, greater abomination? We're about to get into Easter. Whereby instead of celebrating Pascha, which is Passover, Passover, Pascha is. He said, do this as a remember, as a, a memorial, as when the children of Israel came out of Egypt. He said, listen, spring, remember he said, sprinkle the blood on the doorpost, whereby the death angel will pass over. You'll be saved. You will not die. This is what's, what's supposed to be taught on Passover, right? Future prophesying, future about the blood that will be shed on the cross. That's what we're supposed to be teaching, but yet, what are they doing? Rolling around in eggs and praying with bunnies, right? In the house of God. It, listen, he called them an abomination. Listen, verse 16, it says, And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house. That's the house of God. And behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, that's right in the center of the Holy of Holies. 
where were about five and twenty men with their backs towards the temple of the Lord. Their backs turned towards the altar, right? And their faces towards the east. And they worship the sun towards the east. You know, this is this is this is sun worship. That sun worship. They just named it to early morning worship. Sunrise service. Right? 17. Then said he unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Question. Is it a light thing to the house of Judah that they commit the abominations which they do here? Is it a light thing? Do you think that this is no big deal? For they have filled the land with violence and have returned to provoke me to happiness. No, anger. Anger. Does God get anger or angry? Of course he does. Check out um, in, in Matthew when, when Christ made a cattle a nine tail went into the temple and laid to their backs and only turned the money changers. Righteous indignation, right? <coughs> he goes, isn't this supposed to be the house of prayer? <coughs> but you've made it a den of thieves. It was in there with money changers and some mind infested sickly doves or, or two mites, maybe one. And they're supposed to offer that up for a love offering to come to God. That reminds me of Cain when it said that he just took the ground. He just gave an offering. And then Abel took up the first slings of the flock, the best that he had. Right? We don't take off the scrap. We don't give God the scraps. He's given you the ability to do the things that you do in this life, whereby his gifts will make room for you, right? Whereby you can work and pay your bills and feed your children and live. 10% ain't much. You want to just give them any old thing? You be wondering where the power of God is, right? Will a man rob God? Of course, he finds an offering, right? Because you don't give him his due. He's giving you the gift and the ability to do what you do. But then you want to scratch him out of the equation, right? Now you're calling for trouble. He says, for they have filled the land with violence have returned to provoke me to anger and lo, they put the branch to their nose. This word branch is, the word branch here in the Hebrew is asteroid. Asteroid. That's that other God. Not the branch, the, the true branch. To their noses. Therefore will I also deal in fury. Mine eye shall not spare, neither will I have pity. And though they cry in my ears with a loud voice, yet will I not hear them. God is not happy with shenanigans, your plan, your religious um, um, carnivals in the house of God. He's not pleased with that at all. All right? These are the ones that, that when they walk, you can, you can see by, that they're not seen. Chapter 9, verse 1. That's the little background I want to give you before we get into this. Listen. So what is he going to do about this situation? With people playing church. What is he going to do about it? Verse, verse 1 in chapter 9, he says, he cried also in my ears with a loud voice, saying, Cause them that have charge over the city to draw near. Call them in. Even every man with his destroying weapon in his hand. Come, God is saying. Verse 2, And behold, six men came from the way of the higher gate. You know what the higher gate is? That's the, that, that's the courtyard of, of the church. Six men came, the 
listen to this. Now, this is spiritual now. All right? This is spiritual. It's deep. Listen, um, six men came um, by way of the higher gate, which lieth towards the north, and every man a slaughter weapon in his hand. It's unfortunate that the word of God will become a stumbling block for some. And one man among them was clothed with linen. Y'all know what that linen is? Remember in Revelations that um, your linen is woven together by your righteous acts? Those things that you do for God? That's what gives you your, your, your wear in heaven. Right? That robe. It says that one man among them was, um, was clothed with linen with a writer's ink on by his side. And they went in and stood beside the brazen altar. Now they went in, to, now you look at it, to the brazen altar, they come in and they stand beside the brazen altar, that altar um, of God. This man with, with this linen, he, has to, he had to be somebody that was done over the Lord, spiritually speaking. Alright? Spiritually speaking. So they come into the altar of the Lord. And look at verse 3. And the glory of God, of the God of Israel, was gone up from the cherubs, whereupon he was to the threshold of the house. And this is awesome. When you look at this spiritually speaking, it says that the glory of God came up from, among, from the cherubs. These guys, they came and they stood by the altar of God. Right? It said that the, that the glory of God came up upon them and went, and went to the, uh, the um, the threshold of the house. So that means the glory of God got up off the sea and went to the threshold, the threshold. Cherubs is mentioned here that he was among the cherubs when he got up. The cherubs is what covers, remember the ark of the testament? Those two cherubs, what were they there for? The cherubs are the ones who covered the mercy seat of God. So if he, if the glory of God goes up off of that seat, he came off of the altar of God. Y'all hear me? Spiritually speaking, God rose up off of the mercy seat. God don't just sit around waiting for people to zap every morning, right? God is active in the spiritual realm. We can't see him with our natural eyes, but he's there, right? He's not slothful. And he's not lazy. He got up and went to the, um, to the threshold um, of the house to do what? Now, he called the attention of the people. So now when he stands up off the mercy seat, he comes to the threshold to do what? To give the people the word. This is what should be taught, should be taught in the house of God. Listen to this. this is verse 3 again. It says, And the glory of God of Israel was going up from the cherub, whereupon he was, to the threshold of the house. And he called to the man clothed with linen, which had the writer's ink horn by his side. He's going up to minister. Verse 4. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and here's your ceiling, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh, that sigh, and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. He tells this one to go out into all the cities and bring forth that word of God. He's that sealing and seal them to give them that comfort. All those that care, all those that when you hear. Trash talk from the pulpit. You know the word of God says that um, um, that the, the, the 
traditions of man make void the word of God. So when you teach tradition, the word of God is void because you can't use it to back it up. It's just back up whatever you're saying, so it makes the word of God void. <clears throat> when you teach rapture, and many people believe in rapture, hey, that's all right if you want. Right? You can still be my friend. Don't get an attitude. But if you believe in rapture, then you need to find it. Because the word rapture is not even in the English, it's not even in the Hebrew, it's not even in the Greek. And forget about the Aramaic, because it's not there. Right? It's not there. So when you use stuff like that, and there's many people that believe in the rapture, and then, you, and then when you ask them why, they won't be able to answer. Where do you get that? They'll lead you to a pastor that you can't find, they don't have the time that you can't answer the phone or whatever or whatever. But the, the point is, is that when the word of God is being brought forth, you have to bring forth the word of God. Right? Without shenanigans, right? In the Bible, right? He says, go out and, and, um, and, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that, that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that have been done in the midst thereof. And, and this is what we do, is we cry out. I get offended when I hear shenanigans. I really do. And then I go to the Word of God and I teach against it. Because it's not right. And when, if, if we just let it by, you'll see online every day, social media, how people just degrade, mock, Use the word of God as a mockery to it. Right? You got the enemy that knows more than most Christians. The enemy don't even read their Bible, they read ours. Ain't that something? Allow me that, because I'll take you to the enemy in a moment of who I speak about. Alright? Look at verse 5. He says, He says, and to the others, he said in my hearing, or in my ear, he says, go ye after him through the city and smite and smite. Let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. Go out and bring forth the word of God with no respect of persons. If it, if it strengthens an individual, fine. If it hurts an individual, fine. For some people, I guess, they, sometimes they have to wait until they hit rock bottom before they wake up. There's just some people that you can't save, that you, you must have to let them hit rock bottom. You can't save everybody. Right? He says, don't spare none of them. Verse 6, he said, slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children, women, but Come not near any man upon whom is the mark. And begin. This is dangerous. When you go out slaying, when you go out slaying, don't spare nobody, men, women, or children. It's not, not the children. There's a, there's a um, um, what do you call that? Some instance where this is not applied to some children because. They wake up even before their parents. But when he says the latest the children, because God blinds some people for a time. There's a reason, right, that there are some that are blind to truth. But don't spare the children, he's saying, meaning that like father, like son, if you don't teach him the ways of the Lord, he's not going to follow most likely. You follow me? This is why we have so much mayhem in the world today. Who would ever heard? And, and we're, we're adults. We're older, right? We never heard of um, um, elementary school kids getting gunned down. Not in our day, did we? That's terrible, right? Who just disregards life at, at such a young? That's terrible. But it's sad because when we start moving God out of the equation, this is what happens. Put your hand on the, on the Bible and raise your right hand. They don't even do that in church, in, in, um, in the court system no more. No, they took the Bible out of there, right? 
is just raise your right hand? Yeah. Work for the state and mention God and get fired. And then they wonder why, you know, this earth is the way it is, right? Prayer is taken out of schools. The one who set all this up is the, is the very one that we push out. They took prayer out of schools because it offends people of other faith. That worked for us all this time. So why would we move that? If you don't like it, then leave. Right? Because we will serve our God. This is who, this is who put us here. Right? This is a great nation that we really look at. If you don't believe it, then go to a, go to a, a communist nation. Right? Everything is not done properly. It works. He says, slave utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark. And as you go out to slay, I want you to start at my sanctuary. When you go out to slay, you start here behind the pulpit. Because this is where Satan loves to stand. You understand that? And Peter says that judgment starts at the pulpit. Feed my children that junk that you can't even back up. All they do is talk about themselves. He says, then they begin at the ancients. Oh my goodness. He says, first he says, begin at my sanctuary. I want you to start at the church. The sanctuary of God. Then he says, then they begin at the ancients, men which were before the house. This is beautiful because the word ancients, like, just like I've told you before, look it up in your Hebrew, in your, your um, Hebrew concordance. It is elders, it's the word elders, the head of the house, all 25 of them. You know, the Sanhedrians, back in the day, those are the ones who said, yes, put them to death. That, that's your board of directors of the churches today. Bam, you get this. Now, it's, it's awesome because some churches done took that, the, um, some of those divisionable names down, the, the, the denomination names down, um, but some still have. But he said, this is start with the elders. Bring forth this word of God unto them. Right? Verse 7, and he said unto them, defile the house and fill the courts with the slain. Go ye forth. Enough is enough. And they went forth and slew in the city. And it came to pass in verse 8 while they were slaying them, and I was left, this is Ezekiel saying, that I fell upon my face and cried and said, Oh Lord God, will thou destroy all the residue of Israel? In thy pouring out of thy fury upon Jerusalem. He's saying, Lord, my God, Lord, are you going to destroy everybody? My goodness. Listen, if you look at Revelation, the book of Revelation, there, there's seven churches there. And I told you guys this many times before. Seven churches. 
Set in the spiritual completeness, these churches were located geographically speaking in a circle, meaning encompassing the whole world. So any church that you've ever been to, you will find that church within one of those seven. God found no fault, which is two out of seven. Terrible odds. Mass majority, yes, the, 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 way, to heaven, the, the way to destruction is broad. But the way to salvation, that road is narrow. Right? It is. It's rare that you find a Bible teaching church. It's rare. When you find it, stick with it. Really. Verse 10, it says, For as for we also, mine eyes shall not 
spare, neither will I have pity, but I, I will recompense their, um, their way upon their heads. He said, well, if you're not going to hold back, I'll, 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 I'll participate. Behold, and behold, verse 11, the man clothed with linen, which had an inkhorn by his side, reported the matter, saying, I have done as thou hast commanded me. Is that something that you can say to God? Even now, in our lives, in our, our, our business schedules, throughout the week, is that your report to God? I have done what thou hast ordered me to do. Right? Is that a part of your prayer? Is that your report? Seals up verse 9. Let's look at, I mean, um, chapter 9. Let's look at chapter 10. It says, Then I look, verse 1, and behold, in the firmament that was above the head of the cherubims, there appeared over them as it was a sapphire stone, as the appearance of the likeness of the throne. That's about the throne moving. So as you go forward doing what God has ordered you to do, he'll be with you. He won't send you on your way by yourself. God will be with you. He says that God will never leave us nor will he be sacred, right? He's doing his will. And he spake unto the man clothed with the linen and said, Go in between the wheels, even under the cherub, and fill thine hand with the coals of fire from between the chairs and scattered them over the city. And he went in my sight. As soon as he, God ordered him to go, he went. These stones of fire was awesome. This is the very altar of God. This is that fire that was in the burning bush that wasn't consumed. Hebrews chapter 12 the last verse, right? God is that consuming fire. It's the same fire that was in that burning bush. He was the same fire that was in that fiery furnace with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, right? Where they didn't burn, coals weren't singed, right? That's that protecting fire. For some, it's that fire that was burned, but for some, for others, that's that fire that was warm in their hearts. Right? And give them hope to live um, in Christ Jesus. Listen. He says, Now, verse 3, the cherub stood on the right side of the house, and when the man came in, um, and the cloud filled the inner court. I mean, the, the, the glory of God followed him, it surrounded him, and protected him. Then the glory, verse 4, then the glory of the Lord went up from the chair and stood over the threshold of the house. And the house was filled with the cloud and the court was filled with the brightness of the Lord's glory. I like this. This is that Shekinah glory. Shekinah means um, um, God is there. And he just took over his house again. People start listening to the Lord. Don't come in and <laughs> And it won't be that spirit inside of that good teaching. It would be the word of God in verse 5. And it says, And the sound of the cherub's wings was heard even to the outer court as the voice of Almighty God when he speaking. Yes, it's God speaking behind the pool pits of the southern churches. It's that word that's being brought forth, right? We have to do the work and clean the house, right? And bring forth this word of God. I'm gonna, I'm gonna um those that, that have that fire that's burning within them, which is the Holy Spirit, that's the kind of glory, that's consuming the fire, those are the ones that's marked, those that care about the word of God, those that care about what's being taught, those who are who are armed with their ink horn. Fire in our eyes when we go out and we see stupidity that's happening in the church. We'll confront it. Not like we're, you know, angry or anything like that, but bringing a, 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 a caring word and enlightenment upon scriptures um, concerning certain things that happen. 
And bringing enlightenment is even if you are involved in another church and you see that uh, things are happening, or even if they believe in the rapture, just ask them why. Where do you get that from? Could you teach me that? Right? And, and, and if they can't stop and teach you that, and they want to beat around the bush, then you know that something's wrong. So stop playing this game. So I want to take you to another another spot here. Um, let's go to um, the Book of Acts. Um, anybody, y'all know that Paul was um, Paul seeked to destroy the church at one time, didn't he? <clears throat> but when God struck him down on that road to Damascus. God struck him down and I rolled in the masses. That same fire that he had to go against the church, he used it to help build the church. You follow me? And I want to show you something. Um, and this is vital. 